on a clear morning, there is nothing better that Dr. Jayanth Narlikar likes than to indulge in a game of tennis at the sprawling court of Inter-University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics, that is Ayuka, which incidentally is where his professional work lies. What Dr. Narlikar does and has been doing for the past so many decades is in a sphere that defies gravity. It's a world that spins in a different orbit that's surrounded by planets, stars and other heavenly bodies. There's the reflected light from the stars, the black holes, mysterious matter, an explainable relationship that keeps several celestial bodies moving around each other in predetermined paths. You study stars, planets, galaxies, all so far away from our earth. Yet, we find that the laws of physics which we study here on the earth in this remote corner of the universe, those laws of physics and the mathematical techniques which we have are adequate to explain many of the basic features of these remote objects. And so, one feels that there is a, an exciting quest ahead for all of us to understand more and more about this universe. Dr. Narlikar was born on July 19, 1938 in Kolhapur in Maharashtra. They were the days of the Indian freedom struggle reaching its pinnacle, steadily moving towards ousting the hold of the British Empire. Although born in Kolhapur, Jayant had his early education in the spacious and beautiful campus of the Banaras Hindu University where his father, Vishnu Vasudev, was a professor and head of the mathematics department, while his mother, Sumati, was a Sanskrit scholar. After a brilliant academic performance in college, he got his B.Sc. degree in 1957 and went to Cambridge for higher studies. I had applied to Cambridge for admission for doing the mathematical tripos. One fine morning, I received a letter from Fitzwilliam House saying that they will be happy to admit me as a student at Cambridge. This brought immense pleasure to me because it opened the doors of Cambridge for me. Also, the happy circumstance that my father had been a student at the same college. He got his Cambridge degrees in mathematics, including a doctorate and stayed on till 1972 as Fellow of King's College and the founder staff member of the Institute of Theoretical Astronomy. Dr. Narlikar's mentor in those days was his supervisor, Fred Hoyle. And one of the incidents that shaped Dr. Narlikar's vision and perspective was when he was asked by Hoyle to participate with him in a controversy in cosmology. When Martin Ryle and his colleagues in Cambridge announced that their findings in radio astronomy disproved Hoyle's steady state theory, there was a challenge thrown before Fred Hoyle to defend his cosmology. He asked me to work with him to produce a model which will show that the steady state theory was not disproved but was in fact consistent with Ryle's observations. So we worked very hard and got a reply ready. So Fred Hoyle discovered that on the day of the meeting he already had a prior commitment and so he could not attend and present our work at the uh, required time. So he turned to me and said, since you have worked with me on this problem, you can go and talk at this meeting instead of me. Hoyle said to me that if you are sure about the correctness of your work, you should be able to stand up and defend it against any adversary. So with this preparation, I spoke at the meeting 
and it went down very well. Dr. Narlikar could have continued to work outside the country. However, he returned to India to join the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. After a successful career at DIFR, he was invited by the University Grants Commission to be founder member of Inter-University Centre for Astronomy and Astrophysics, that is IUCA. It was a great pleasure to work with him, share the vision and dream of the IUCA and the secret of his, uh, so to say, working philosophy was trust breeds trust. Ayuka is undoubtedly the greatest gift he has given to the nation, in particular to university teachers and students. One key aspect of uh, Jain's personality, both as scientist as well as as human being, is the coexistence of very strong convictions and views, along with a very liberal attitude towards uh, uh, other points of view. For example, in science, he strongly believes that the standard approach to cosmology, the Big Bang model, is incorrect and he has his own ideas about uh, how the cosmology should be done. But at the same time, when anyone else wants to work on an alternate model, the standard Big Bang cosmology, he has been most encouraging. And in that sense, Jayanth is a truly democratic man. Let me share a worry with you. We get very few good students coming to astronomy. In fact, the trend towards basic science has diminished considerably in the last few years. I think it is because of parental pressures that students seek other avenues for their career than going to basic science. In the long term, this will be harmful for our country because science progresses on all fronts. This can only happen if students are there to carry out our mandate. In this unending quest for Dr. Narlikar, astronomy has been an evolving form of science and his constant endeavor has been to break new ground in it. That explains the many awards that he has been honored with over the years including a Padma Bhushan at the young age of 26 and a Padma Vibhushan in the year 2004. It is interesting to note that while space for most of us is a defined concept that has its limitations, Dr. Narlikar's idea of space envelops the entire universe. Of course, when he is at home, there is nothing but the inner space that becomes important. Uh, we were introduced by our parents with the hope that uh, we might like each other and we might decide to get married. Well, we seem to have liked each other because Jayan proposed to me through a long letter. And I replied orally. I said, yes, I will marry you. <laughs> he is excellent as a husband and as a father and as a householder generally. He is very, very uh, human and generally understands other points of view or gives consideration to other people, gives time to other people. We have got three daughters. He has always had a wonderful sense of humor. He has been able to uh, use his humor and his imagination to keep us entertained. He doesn't talk about God. 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 He doesn't resort to those things even when he is in difficulty or even when he is sad. But he does believe that there is some supernatural power, but it cannot be bright. Tencha bahutek katha ani pustaka mala avardat. Tencha madhe kai tari ek vidyanik kalpana asthe. Manje atta parinte maithi asle la kiva siddha sare la vidyan ghi un tencha var ankhi kai tari navin kalpana ghalun manavi jivana madhe kai phara khushakti la shakalpana karela tena avardat. 
However, the man of space needs a break too from all the scientific thoughts that crowd his mind. And guess what he does to relax? Read. And what he loves best is to pick up a book that offers humor. As in the works of Acharya Atre, Pula Desh Pande or P.G. Wodehouse. I personally would like to be remembered as one who did not necessarily follow the flock, the bandwagon, because I feel that one needs to critically examine the theories and speculations about the universe. And I have accepted only those which I feel are really supported by facts. I would like to be remembered also as a scientist who enjoyed doing science and who also liked to share his enjoyment with the layperson.